Hi, this is Jonathan of Echo Church. Thank you for joining us. Today, I would like to start uh, the book of Acts. And for the next uh, couple of Sundays, I'd like to go through this book. The book of Acts and the Gospel of Luke, they're written by the same individual, Dr. Luke. And they go hand in hand. The Gospel of Luke talks about the life of Jesus. And the book of Acts uh, talks about the life of the church and its uh, inception and the beginning. And so it is a good book for us to know because as we go into the future, after the pandemic lockdown, I would like to believe that God is leading us into the new era. I call it the promised land. As we enter the promised land, the church, the uh, gathering of the people of God, they need to be different. Uh, they need to be new in a sense. Um, as, as the people of Israel, they were different uh, from the, the, the way they lived in Egypt and that they are supposed to live in the promised land. Uh, that, that was a huge difference, a qualitative difference. And in the same way, I believe that the church <clears throat> is being led by the Lord into the new era when uh, and where uh, where to live uh, more like the book of Acts. <clears throat> so let's uh, take a look at uh, chapter one. Interestingly, when you look at chapter one, uh, there are a few words uh, of Jesus. And uh, what Jesus focuses on is the Holy Spirit. So look at uh, verse uh, four, chapter one of the book of Acts. And while uh, staying with them, and that is Jesus, uh, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard me, uh, heard from me, for John baptized with water, but uh, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Uh, that was the Pentecost that uh, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit and the church, uh, church was launched. And uh, uh, the Pentecost Sunday was a few uh, Sundays ago. And so it's very timely for us to go into this book. Here it says that you heard from me. Jesus had talked about the Holy Spirit. Uh, there are some recordings uh, of uh, Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, especially in the Gospel of John chapter 14 and 16. But apparently Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit. And so they understood uh, what to expect. And then uh, a little bit later on, uh, the, uh, the apostles, the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? In verse 7, Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness, witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea in Samaria, uh, Samaria and to the end of the earth. Um, here, the disciples are asking, uh, I'm sure, all sorts of questions, and, and this in particular about the end time eschatology. But Jesus said, well, listen, let's not worry about the future. Let's worry about here and now. And that is the beginning of the church and the things that the church, the people of God, uh, are tasked to do. And that is that you will be my witnesses. So here is the reason for our existence here on earth. The reason why right after we become Christians and believe in Jesus Christ and receive salvation, why are we not being transported to heaven and live there forever? Uh, the reason is because we have a task here on earth and that task is spelled out clearly that we are to be uh, the witness of Jesus Christ, his person, his work, his words, uh, everything that he was 
and he presented and represented now where to represent Jesus Christ here on earth. That is why we're here, first and foremost. We can continue in our career where we can continue to uh, build our home and, and, and raise our family, uh, do all sorts of things that we're supposed, uh, we do it on a daily basis. But underlining, underlying that reality of everyday life is the truth that we are called we are uh, we have a mission to accomplish and that is to represent jesus christ and the reason why we can continue in our everyday life is because we're supposed to represent jesus in every segment of society every area of our everyday life because jesus is the lord over everything all of creation every aspect of our life and so uh, we're supposed to live our everyday life and and in that context, in that place, we're to bring Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God. Now, again, uh, the few things that are quoted uh, uh, as the words of Jesus Christ in the chapter one of uh, the book of Acts, it's all about the Holy Spirit. And so the key is this, the Holy Spirit is the driving force. In fact, the Holy Spirit is the main uh, uh, person in this book of Acts. Uh, sometimes it is said that the, the book of Acts is the Acts of the Apostles, but uh, also it is the Acts of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit. It makes sense because Luke, in the Gospel of Luke, focused on the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. And in the subsequent book, the book of Acts, Luke focuses on the third person of the Holy, uh, Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit. So as we move forward as the church, we must be aware, we must uh, pay attention to, and we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the key and the difference in, in the church and for us as uh, individual believers. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no uh, Christian walk and Christian faith. And so um, going into the summer months, uh, I will be talking more about the Holy Spirit and uh, our relationship with him. Further down, uh, verse 14, um, after Jesus was taken up, they returned uh, to the upper room. And all these, with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and the Mary, the mother of Ju uh, Jesus, and his brothers. Uh, they're talking about the uh, 12 disciples. Uh, well, at this point, 11, because Judas. Um, uh, commit suicide, and and uh, with the other disciples, they were together. And where did they start? They started by devoting themselves to prayer. And the Bible is an example for us. And and so for us, as we look at the works and and the examples we see in the Book of Acts, we can learn how we need to uh, conduct ourselves as the church and the beginning place is uh, devoting ourselves to prayer i believe that every church every congregation should be known as a house of prayer to god through jesus christ and uh, uh, that's an, uh, always a growing area for me and i'm sure for all of you and so let's uh, uh, covenant together to move forward as the body of Christ, as the church, and to become known as the house of prayer. And uh, that is one of the things that I'd like us to focus on is to, to pray. And it's, it's such a rich uh, environment. It's such a rich um, tool that God has given to us. It's, it's not just uh, telling God what we need or what we want it's far more than that it, it's an interaction it's it's a communion 
it's a conversation with God. And so that means to me that prayer includes uh, praise and worship, uh, even meditation, listening to God, as well as uh, appealing to God, a petition, uh, interceding for others. All of these things are part of what I believe to be a prayer. And so that's another thing that I'd like us to be practicing going forward is prayer. So the book of Acts is really an example for the church today, how we're to do the church together. And chapter one, we see that the Holy Spirit is central to the health of the church as well as the health of our individual Christian walk and the prayer is the beginning point. Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful book. And uh, we look forward to learning more about how you are leading us, the church here in the uh, United States in the 21st century uh, from this example of the first century church. And may we become more like the church that you desire us to become. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us and see you next week.